Hello? Is that working? Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the January 9th Metropolitan Traffic and Parking Commission meeting. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Uh, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal your decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry of the Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. I move for approval of today's agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Is there a second? We have a first and a second. All in favor? All right. All right. Uh, approval of the minutes of the December 12, 2022 meeting. I think some a revised copy was placed on our desk, Jason. Yes, sir. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. We have a first and a second. All in favor? All right. The uh, minutes have been approved. Chair? Yes. We have a little bit of a monitor. I don't know if we get it. Oh, it's a, yours is a little blurry. Okay. Is there an IT person? Yeah. Technical difficulty. Okay. All right. So, can we proceed? Okay. All right. The next item is approval of consent agenda. Please note that items on the consent agenda will be approved at one time. We have two items. Uh, is does anyone we we wish that these be removed? Uh, there is one item uh, that does need to be removed because it was with it was withdrawn by WeGo. Okay. Uh, it is item number four point oh one. Four point oh one. Okay. And uh, they would like to look at that further. Okay. So the consent agenda is one item regarding the authorization of a new restriction for left turn movements on Overcrest Drive at Harding Place from 4 to 6 p.m. requested by Council Member Johnson. All in favor? Any opposed? It's been approved. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. May I pose a quick question to staff about the item that was removed from consent, just a point of information? Yes. Okay. Um, I was really glad to see that that intersection and those issues were going to be addressed. And when you said we go is going to give another look at it, um, I just wanted to share um, that area is problematic in many regards, as I'm sure y'all can tell me, start to analyze it. Um, but uh, folks coming towards the courthouse down Charlotte Pike do not know it's an added lane and that creates my function junction it stacks all the way back Charlotte Pike over Capitol Hill also the on-street parking there is kind of problematic when the bus turns on the lower end of Charlotte so there's a whole lot of stuff going on there um, that I hope might be incorporated in the analysis while we go so in addition to that very specific request I think there's a few other kind of knock-on related items at that location if I just wanted to bring that to okay. attention. Yeah, we'll look at it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So um, the next item five has a set of parking meter locations requested, but it would seem to be more logical if the smart parking business plan presentation was done before that. We're waiting for the director to come. Right, Mr. Odom? That's correct. Okay. So, um, is, so we did approve 4.02. 4.02. We approved it. Okay. So, we're trying to get the item five, which is just for commissioners. Thing is, 
is a series of installation of, of parking meters, which is what this board, uh, this commission has authority for. But we were hoping to have a presentation that would kind of provide some background to why these particular locations are on the agenda for, yes, ma'am. Yes. Here she comes. Oh, I wanted to just ask a question when I was studying this. You might be able to uh, tell me, Mr. Oldham, when the greens, what's existing on what we had, and then the red was what's being proposed. Is the red that's like on that on that little square, is that for all that's green? See, I'm confused, or is it just for like um, one place? Yeah, this map right here in front of you, uh, the red is just showing the area of the new proposed meter installations. Right. And the intent was really to give the commission kind of an idea of where this is happening, and also that it, in most cases, it is adjacent to an already metered area just to try to fill in the gaps because people are like, well, I don't want to pay the meter, so I'm going to park you know, 50 feet away where it's free in a kind of a commercial area. So we wanted to just kind of fill those gaps and uh, our, my director will definitely fill even more gaps. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, she is gonna actually start off with item six that will lead yes. into item five as okay. the chair was mentioning. I just, I'm still, I'm still confused. So is, you know, I see like Scarrett Place has a red triangle and then there's a lot of green triangles there. So is that red covering everything that's green? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy New Year's. <laughs> okay. All right, Director. Yeah. Welcome Thank and you. Happy New Year. Happy I hope New you Year. had a safe and happy holiday. I did. Thank you very much. What I, I actually uh, had the pleasure of being at the... Nash Bash downtown for New Year's and what an exciting event that is and it's done so well and it was just absolutely fun. So thank you very much for that. So uh, yes, ma'am, what you are seeing there is the green is representing the meters that are in place and the red is representing the additional area we want to put in. Uh, we actually broke down exp more explicitly how many spaces we think it would be. I want to just share with y'all real quick as we move forward with new parking, we're not T marking them out. So typically when we put out a, a new parking space, we'll like put a T on the street to show the space starts here and the space stops that stops here. We're not doing that anymore. We're going to kind of just put a one stripe that goes across to let people know they got to be within the line against the curb because cars are a different size. So in some of these spaces, we may be able to put 10. And other times, if we have more small cars than big cars, we may be able to get 12. And if we have a lot of big cars, we may only get eight. So we want to kind of leave the variable up um, and not designate every single space. We kind of want to leave it open so that the cars can kind of fit themselves in there and we can maximize out the space based on the size of the car. So that's why you don't see the number of spaces. It's more of an area that we're defining. And that's what that means. So I apologize, but that's what I just wanted to share. So does that, is it okay? Yeah, go ahead. So, so does that mean where the red triangle is, it's going to be like that area is that block's going to be covered on one side if it's one side now uh, is it going yeah. to be two sides or well it depends and the, so i think you i think we have it broken down in the presentation we actually went through and provided the pictures so some of them are on both sides and some of them are only on one side okay because it's like one big kiosk instead of individual. Correct. Okay, exactly. Right. Yes, okay. ma'am. And just also remember, as we move forward, we're also moving to the ability to use our phones. So now you'll have the ability to walk up. There'll be signage that you can scan and it'll bring it up, or you can text and it'll bring it up. We're also looking at the ability where you'll be able to do a pay by mobile concept, or you'll be able to go directly to the app. It'll have a space number, or actually have a zone area, and you can put in the zone and be there. So it is really about the area and not so much the individual space. We're getting away from that. Thank you. No, thank you. All right, so you're just taking me back? Where are we going? What are we doing now? Go back one minute, please. Okay. 
did they have do did we take a vote on this do we want to take a vote on the additional meter spaces no, first no, no, uh, what we wanted to do was get your presentation because it would provide context for okay the, perfect the all right so we wanted to quickly give you all an update on the business plan um, you know lads did meet their requirement in providing us a business plan by day 30 once we had it up and Gordon um, up in place we had a chance to review that business plan make a lot of remarks and send it back to them so there is a lot of work that has to be done done with this. So we quickly just want to run through it. Can y'all move to the next slide? So really what I wanted kind of to harp into, because this is a work in progress and there's a lot of different things that are going on right now. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you an overview of the table of contents. The reason why I didn't bring the whole business plan back before you today is because we're still going back and forth on a lot of these different category items. But I wanted you to kind of understand the depth in which we were looking to expand on that. Please do not use the page numbers as correct because those are all gonna change because of contents going into each one of these items. But I wanted to kind of go over some of this. So we do have an executive sum summary, which is really about the roles and responsibilities that they have and we have. And there are some very specific roles and responsibilities in the executive summary that we spell out. So for example, they're gonna be responsible for maintaining all the meters. They're gonna be responsible for providing um, leadership. And as a matter of fact, I just real quickly wanna introduce two of the gentlemen from LAS that are here that are actually going to be managing um, the program on behalf of LAS. So Brandon, if you would stand and say hello. Hello everyone. Brandon is our general manager and he is the direct response person from LAS that was directly responsible for our entire project. He's 100% dedicated to Metro Nashville, Davidson County. He's not being shared. And then our director of operations that's sitting next to him is Juan. Nice to meet you. And so Juan is here and he'll be really dug into the day-to-day -day operations. Um, and then we are missing one other individual that I'll make sure we bring to the next meeting and that is the young lady that will be our customer service manager. So we'll also have a customer service manager. I think when I really wanna share is, so in this, we're right now really digging into the operational plan review, which is a little bit down on the chart if you look at this. And we're really looking at the implementation of technology. So as y'all remember, uh, you in the plan, we're moving to electronic citation, kiosks instead of in individual single space meters. We're also moving into technology of the apps. We're also moving into uh, more data reporting. Cannot wait to get all of that data in front of y'all. So looking forward to it. So right now we're working very closely with our court um, because when we write a citation, after we write it, it has to go over to the court system to actually for collection um, with the way we're set up. So we're actually working through that process. We've had a couple meetings between the courts, ourselves, and with our technology folks. Um, and we have quite a few more set up. So we're just now really digging into that. We are working with the software company that we've hired for the citation management. So we have the LPR system, which is one set of technology. We have our citation management, which is another set of technology. We have our multi-space meters, which is another set of technology. And then we have our app and our QR code and text, which is another set of technology. So right now we're having all of the meetings with all of the different components of that and making sure that everything can be integrated. The court system is really important because we have to make sure we can send the file over to the court and then the court can send the file back to us to keep the citation up to date. But what'll be really great is that data we're collecting is we'll understand where we have in the biggest number of violators. So where are the most tickets being written? What is the violation? Is it over time? Is it not even paying? Is it you know illegally parking or not facing traffic the correct way? So we're gonna really be able to dig into the data. And it was really great. I was having a conversation just before I got here um, with um, our TLC because I think I did share with y'all part of our plan and last plays a really important role with this is we are adding enforcement folks to the number of, um, to our team. Currently right now we have five positions. We're looking to up it pretty significantly now that since last meeting y'all approved and took us to 24 seven. Again, thank y'all very much for that support. I really do appreciate that. Um, so we do have to look at pushing that up, but one of the things that our enforcement folks are gonna be doing, it's not just about enforcing the parking. They're also gonna be helping with enforcing the other things. So we're gonna 
be cross training our folks for for enforcement on the TLC side. So on the on the Transportation License Commission, where they're responsible for taxis, they're responsible for the entertainment folks, they're responsible for the pet cabs. We're going to cross train both sides and make sure that we have coverage all the time throughout the city to make sure that we're um, being very effective um, and we're covering everything. So this is going to allow some synergy as well as some savings. So we're working through that right now. And that's a lot of dialogue that has to go back and forth. We have approved to purchase up to 125 new uh, multi-space meters. We've also approved the purchase of the LPR system. We've also purchased the new vehicles that we need for the enforcement folks we'll be adding. And we are in conversation right now and finalizing the purchase order for the citation management. So a lot of the stuff is really starting to come together and we're getting really excited. And that will all go into this. So I would hate to, uh, they did put everything in there, but it's kind of like um, a place. I don't want to say it's a placemaker. That's not fair. It's, it's more, there's no debt. I'm sorry. There's no debt when what we have in the current business plan is really the equipment, what they offer. It's kind of their sales tactic, I guess is a good way to put it. And then now we need to break it down and really specialize it to Nashville and what that means and how that looks. Because it does vary from city to city and how you're going to use the technology. So we're working through that right now, and that's a lot of fun. With that is also the tra the, um, the staffing plan. So Again, I got the staffing plan. I have been going back and forth over the past two to three weeks with Laz about what I want. As I shared just now, we're looking for cross training. So that means we don't need as many, but we have the complete coverage we need. So we're still kind of finessing through that and working through that. That's on every level. I'm real big, a bulk of our business is nights and weekends. I mean, our business is really Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on the day and the night. So it's really important to me to make sure that we have that covered across the board with our management, as well as with the enforcement, our customer service. I really am focusing on about delivery of excellence. So that's been taking a little bit more time to kind of really figure out what that needs to look and feel like, but that is moving forward. Peter, hours of operation, we took care of that at the last meeting, so that one's kind of pretty clear. And then one of the couple things we're going to be working on with y'all as we move forward is some policy. So what we do intend as we move forward with our business plan is a lot of policies are going to come out of out. So we've been working on some of them with you, but we need to fine tune them and we need to bring a lot more forward for this board to make a decision on. So I anticipate at the next meeting, we'll have a couple of those policies back before you um, kind of updating special events, kind of updating. We did, y'all did draft a special event policy, but then there's things that have already started tweaking in it that we need to bring back before you. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of those policies with y'all and giving getting direction from this board about how you think it would be best for us to address them moving forward, including to a policy and recommendation of maybe when you would give loading and unloading, because now what I think I really uh, would, the value of moving forward and really putting a parking program in place is this is a revenue stream that can support infrastructure improvements for Metro Nashville data. Davidson County um, with the way these dollars are all going to be earmarked that allow us to put it toward transportation and parking improvements. And that's a way for us to move a lot of those initiatives forward that we need to. So removing a meter is, is, a, is a dent to that opportunity of where I do not have to go out and ask for geobonding to get something done. I have money to actually go do it. So it's, a, it's another uh, business practice is a good way to put it. So we want to put some context to when that decision would be made, the criteria that would be established for this board to consider when you're removing a meter and what that looks and feels like. So we have a lot more of that to come before you. So now with that is adding meters. So part of our plan was not only last month we talked about the hours of enforcement. Um, and this month it's really about having some opportunities to start adding inventory. We're currently a little bit over 1,800 single space meters or I want to say parking spaces in the city. And there's a lot more opportunity to grow. Um, we actually did a walkthrough. We got all together together one morning, and of course, I picked one of the coldest mornings of the month, other than Christmas weekend, uh, to get out and walk, but we did. We got out and we walked, and we identified right off the bat, easy, no headache, 
places where we should have it metered. And as you can see from this, most of the places, which are the, the red triangle, we've identified them. They're already around meters that are in place. So this is just adding more to the inventory where it makes sense. We didn't go off and create brand new spaces. This is within the area where parking's already happening. It's safe. We just need to get it actually signed appropriately, metered, and then start doing some enforcement. Um, one thing real quick I forgot to mention on the business plan that we'll be spelling out, and I would actually be bringing it back to y'all because I need your permission on this, and I'll have this ready in the next meeting, is that we will plan on starting to go live on the citation side of the house next month with the 24-7, and I want to do a what I call a soft approach. So basically, the first couple of weeks, <coughs> excuse me, I just want to really give warnings. I do not want to go in and just start writing tickets. I want to give warnings, give people a chance to be aware that the hours of enforcement have changed. We now have people out here that are doing it, and so I want to actually get permission because y'all actually are the ones that regulate that. That's going to allow us to do a two-week, what I call a soft approach, where we're actually writing warnings and just giving more of a customer service friendly reminder. Of course, part of that would also include in that is if we give someone a warning, but they don't heal it. And so the next day we find them doing the same thing and they think they're going to get two weeks of free parking, they would actually get a citation. So we want to kind of um, work on that. So we'll be bringing that back for, before y'all as a start policy to help us get up and running so that everybody understands exactly what we're doing. Um, so this is what we're asking for. So I, do you have, um, Cody, by chance, the the graph that you sent me earlier about what this does, the breakdown, because, the the, yes, sir, the financial breakdown. Is, slide? is it? Okay, so let's start going through the slide then, if we could. Can you find that in there for me? All right. Oh, thank you so much. So this first one is on Davis on, is on the Division Street Bridge, um, just west of Sixth Avenue. Um, there's approximately eight spaces, and if we actually are able to go in and meter that and start this in February, like we talked, we feel like this will bring in an additional, roughly around thirty-eight thousand dollars worth of new revenue for us. Um, the spaces are actually already created. It was actually designed with the bridge, and right now it's free parking with no time limit at all. So basically. Basically, I can park my car there and never even have to move it, and there's really not much more I can do it. Other than we do have an ordinance that says we can go in and cite someone for exceeding 24 hours, but we rarely do that. That's something that will change as well. Thank you. Perfect. I see that. So the next place that we've identified is also on 11th Avenue between McGavick Street and Laurel Street. Great opportunity. There's a parking around here as well. Uh, we feel this will be approximately 26 spaces. And again, I use approximate because we're not going to be, we're going to put a line on the street so everybody knows exactly where they can park, but we're not going to identify the spaces because either we'll get a lot squeezed in or we won't get as many. So I may have 26 one day, I may have 20 the next and I may only have like 20 the one day um, but this one when we would put in there we would actually meter it it would follow by the way every place that we're looking and asking for new inventory to be added is going to follow the area time limits and rates and everything that are already into place so we're it's we're not looking to change anything so if the area in this is actually two two hours we're going to keep two hours we are revisiting that though, but we have a lot of um, workshopping we need to do with area businesses. Is two hours the right time? Is three hours the time? Is it four hours? And we haven't started that shopping yet with the businesses to understand what their business demand is, but we will be doing that. So whatever is currently in the area, we're following the same protocol. Uh, we're just looking to meter these. Uh, uh, we have a commissioner with a question. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, you go right ahead. No, it's okay. I'm just trying to track uh, the slide to the packet. Oh, okay. The numbers seem to, because we, we can't see the monitor. I can never do anything. But the revenue numbers seem to be different from the packet to the slide. Are they? Just want to make sure that I'm tracking right. Yeah, real quick on that. We, uh, we just made a last minute change as requested by Diana. Um, the revenue that you're seeing up there is actually just takes us to the end of the fiscal year. Here. Or in the packet, it had actually a full year. So you could just say, easy math, after five years, that times five. Okay. But this, we just, if we went and moved forward with approving these, that's what we could expect by the end of this it's fiscal, fiscal year. fiscal year. Thank you. you. Know, so time counts. So. Okay. Yeah. Is that fiscal year? 
July um, 1, uh, June 30. Correct. Thank you, sir. Yeah, through July 1st of this year. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, so we wanted to kind of give that spot check of what uh, this would do. All right. And, and commissioners, please feel free to, if you have a question. Like yeah. Because many times it's good while it's top of mind. Yes. So in this particular area with the 26 spaces, we f uh, feel that it will generate roughly around $125,000 in additional revenue um, for the fiscal year through July June 30th of 2023. Thank you. All right. The next one is um, the James Robinson Parkway from Representative John Lewis's way to 6th Avenue is removed the existing two hour restriction at the same location. Um, and this would be adding um, 22 new spaces. So right now the parking is available, but it's free, right? Mm -hmm. It's free. And we're looking to add it. And then further back, we do have meter. Further back on the James Robinson, we actually have it metered. But, um, and it's a two hour limit. So we want to stay, again, we want to stay with what's identical in the area. But this would allow us to add those additional spaces, roughly 22. And we feel that this would create around $106,000 of new revenue. I think what's really important is. Where you have free parking, people have the tend to migrate there first and then not using the meter spaces. So it's going to allow for better utilization across the board. And then as we continue to grow the inventory, it won't allow people to push into neighborhoods because we're going to have everything metered appropriately. And if it's if they try to go into a neighborhood, that's where we'll actually partner with our council members about a residential parking permit program. Because what we do not want to do is push that into neighborhoods, especially in our urban area. And this is going to be a, a continuous growing, but that is the direction we're moving in. Okay, next one. This is new meter spaces um, on Scarrett um, Place between 21st and 19th. It's approximately 15 um, spaces, and we feel this will generate roughly around 40000 additional dollars for the year. Next. And uh, this is um, on 25th Avenue from Ellis. Elliston Place to Patterson Place. I believe this is on the other side. This is actually an example of where we're doing on one side. We already have meters on the other side, but we do not on this side. So as you can see, everybody goes to the non-meter side. This is going to kind of even it all out. And so again, following the same rule of trend, we're going to stay with the same hours of enforcement as well as the um, time limit involved. And this will be approximately 30 spaces that we would generate. And it's roughly around $80,000 that we feel it could bring in additional revenue. All right. So again, south side of Peterson between 25th and Leslie, 20 spaces, uh, roughly around 53,000 that we feel it would actually generate. So as you can see, we have meters on the other side. So we were trying to give an example of where we're just evening it up where it makes sense. Wait just a second. That's where I park when I go see my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now we would kindly ask that you feed the meter, sir. Okay. Oh, well, I had noticed put that this because into of that, but it was just kind of funny. So, see, you're doing it. <laughs> so is everybody else. <laughs> my point. I just, my point just got sold. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so the next one we're looking at is actually on Leah Avenue from Rutledge Street to 2nd, approximately 11 spaces, 53,000. Please keep in mind, um, when we did figure out the revenue, we also did it based on what we felt utilization would be. So we didn't just go in there and assume 24 hours. If it was a 24 hour seven, we would did the numbers based on 24. We were quite conservative. We did it based on the number of spaces, the hours that they could be there. So if it had a four hour limit, you wouldn't have as many turns, but if you had a two hours, you'd have more turn. And then we did add a certain percentage of what we felt it would be used. So for example, maybe 60% of the time we felt like the spaces would be utilized and 40% of the time they would not. So we were really quite conservative in our approach um, to these numbers. We just weren't blanket about them. I wanted to let y'all know. We really did look into what's currently in the area, the mixed uses that are in the area, the commercial, the retail, all of that, what we felt the demand would be, what we know the demand is and then what that utilization would look like when we actually sat down and kind of did these numbers. Um, and we really acted on a very conservative side when we put them together. So in this case, 11 and roughly around 53,000. Yes, sir. And with the utilization I see that you're talking about, would you be able to, um, like you're saying, that you'll be able to optimize it. So would you be able to optimize pricing as well? Or is everything going to be fixed? Uh, well, we do plan on getting there, but give me a year. 
Okay. <laughs> so they call that dynamic pricing. And yes, sir, we do plan on moving into that world, but it, it's, we need about a year to get to there. You know, if we came in with dynamic pricing right now, I think people would just probably revolt against me personally. Take me out. Well, it's just like, you know, whenever you're using an Uber, yes. you know, it's the same, same concept. You're concept. absolutely correct. And we do plan on doing dynamic pricing as well. We just need to get ourselves very organized, get things established. I mean, this is my first come with y'all and asking for additional um, inventory to be added. This will not be my last. So I really feel like I need to build up my inventory, get the data behind it, really understand better utilization, what the demands are. And this is going to have some impact to neighborhoods, so I'm going to need to work with the neighborhoods on that. So that's why I asked, give me a year, and then I do plan on coming back and saying, hey, I want to talk about pricing now. So Because really, we're way under market. When you look at what's happening in Nashville and all the private um, garages, we're really considerably under market. But I, I want to get the data, be, have the conversation with the with that, with y'all first. Then, then we have the data to have a better and healthier conversation with the community. So, yes, sir. All right. Um, next one is um, on Ninth Avenue from Glee Street to Division Street. Um, and I lived in this area, so I walk this all the time and drove my staff crazy on many levels. Um, but this is about 10 spaces. Um, it is heavily utilized, and we feel that this will generate roughly around 48,000 um, additional dollars through the end of the fiscal year. And next, I'm, am I getting to the end? Close. I'm close. I thought so. We did. We, I, I will tell you, we spent, good, we spent a whole day walking. <laughs> The team did. I had the whole morning with them. And I, I'm telling you, I picked a cold day to do it, too. So this is actually 10th Avenue from Palmer to Lee Street on 8, um, to 8th South, um, approximately 550 um, feet, and then 25 spaces we feel it would create, and roughly around 120000 uh, additional dollars for the um, fund. And next... Um, and then this is Elliston, Elliston Place from 23rd to 25th. And again, this meters are on one side and free parking's on the other, so we want to divvy up and have, share the love. Um, this is approximately 30 spaces, and we think it'll create roughly around $80,000 for the fund. And I am using um, round numbers as I'm going through this conversation. And next slide. And I think that is it. So when you add all of that up, that actually equates to roughly around $747,000 that we feel like will be added to the fund balance and additional revenue with these meters that we're requesting y'all consider allowing us to add to the inventory. So thank you very much thank for that you. opportunity. I Are appreciate there it. any questions? Yes, council member. Um, question about that uh, last, is that for this fiscal year or annually? The, well, we these numbers are strictly the fiscal year. Um, so I, the 747K. It's all these numbers added, so it's fiscal year. Yeah, it's for the fiscal year through FY23. Okay. So if you can imagine, that's actually for five months because we're starting in February going through June. So if you just take that and add, we're pretty much at roughly around maybe close to $2 million that we would probably come in over an annual basis. Okay, I appreciate that. With just these numbers, Thank with you, these Terry. new inventory. And if I may, I had a more general um, question, just kind of overall um whether it be Elliston Place or um, kind of the the Vanderbilt area or James Robertson Parkway downtown. I know in the downtown areas, obviously the Connect Downtown study is in progress. Mm -hmm. And whenever I kind of think about uh, on-street parking and what the trade-offs are, um, often I have in the back of my mind our bikeways, right? Yes, and those connections that we want to make. And so I'm confident that internal to downtown, based on the conversations we've had about Third Avenue and elsewhere, that you all are kind of figuring out how to optimize um, our, our downtown core bikeable network. Yes, ma'am. So I would assume that the two um, James Robertson Parkway, um, that you all do not anticipate including James Robertson Parkway as a uh, part of a bike boulevard or part of a bicycle connection or anything like that? Um, no, ma'am, it's, it's actually not um, in, on the bikeways plan, nor is okay. it being considered through Connect Downtown. Okay. Um, and then again, the spaces already exist today. We're just really asking y'all to allow us to move Understood. Them. They're kind of offset a yeah. little bit on James Robertson. Yes, ma'am. I guess more 
specifically then in the Midtown area, right? Mm -hmm. So we know Connect Downtown that you're looking at all that. Yes, ma'am. But when we kind of move out to Midtown, we've got Centennial Park, we've got Vanderbilt University, we have our medical centers. And so, you know, when I'm thinking about Vanderbilt students that are trying to go to businesses on Elliston or people that are trying to engage our parks, um, we have a lot of really wide roadways in that area. When even, you know, you park it and then you've got a lane and then you got a turn lane and then you got like, I mean, it's like you can land yeah. aircraft in some of these areas. So, um, oh, Lord help us now. I, yeah. And so I guess, um, I'm just wondering, while I'm confident with the Connect Downtown piece, because I know y'all are looking very specifically mm -hmm. at all those bikeway routing, as we move out into Midtown, would you just say because of um, the way we're not individually striping because we're using kiosks as, as that evolves or we make plans for our bikeways in Midtown, we can take that in, we can take it out. Yes. We have more flexibility now than we mm -hmm. used to. Yes, ma'am. I mean, what'll be great about about the kiosk operation and also just going to your telephone technology is that we can pick it up and move it very easily. Um, so I can have a meter here and then if a development comes in and let's say the development wants to do something and remember y'all passed a policy when it came to development, we would be able to take that kiosk, pick it up and move it somewhere else. So that's why we're only starting with 125 meters, even though in the original proposal that we received from last was for 250. I said, no, let's start with 125 because in some areas it doesn't make sense to be put a kiosk, it makes sense to use the technology, this this type of technology, and offer those different options in the kiosk. So this that'll be a moving target as well. And once we get through and we know exactly where every meter is going to go, we'll be bringing that back too as, as we continue to move forward. So I'm going to be coming back to you and say, we're removing these single space meters. We're going to put a, multi, we're going to put a kiosk or multi-space meter. But here we're going to use this technology. So we're mapping that out as well to bring that back to you. Not that that that, um, that 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 needs approval. We just, as a board, feel like y'all have been so invested in the smart parking, and I feel like I need to make you aware of what we're doing and we're thinking, and we're not just act there out there acting on our own. Okay, so we'll be bringing that forward in the near future too. The community then does not need to worry that in choosing these places or adding these places that we're precluding any future bikeable infrastructure. Not at all. Okay, thank you. Any yes. Can I just get more information on the change from regular marked spaces to just a line across the curb and how, you know, the data behind, I have a large truck, so sometimes I take up a spot and a half or I know that I can't fit there, so how, how, do, how does that well, with the new way we're going, your large truck and you are going to appreciate us um, because you're only going to have to pay for your one truck as we're now technically, if you go over the line, you should be paying for the two spaces. Um, but moving forward by not doing the T marks, I may have big trucks in there or I may have smaller vehicles in there. And so the variable, it'll one day it'll be a certain number and the next day it'll probably be more or less. So that's why we're just going to put a line along the street that that lines up with like hat, safety hatch marks. And within that line is where you need to park. So you're not out into the street because it's really about also making sure we keep the travel lanes up open and available. But if you pull in there, you just, you pull in and your truck is one and you pay for one. Um, and then the next car behind you may be a small Fiat and I could probably fit for the size of your truck, three Fiats. So it'll vary accordingly. And that's why we have approximate number of spaces, not solid. And actually that allows for more parking to happen and for the turns to happen quicker as well. So that's why we're kind of leaving it open. It actually tends to work out more favorable for you than against you. Okay. Um, so some of these in residential and, and business areas with regards to <laughs> deliveries and people moving in and out and taking up a spot with a tra trailer or whatnot, um, are, are we just there policing that or, or how? How is that being watched and monitored? Yes, sir. Actually, we are policing that. Um, and so if they're in a metered space, um, they need to feed the meter. If they're in unmetered space and loading, loading zone, 
typically, as long as they're loading and unloading, we'll allow that to happen, especially for move in and move out. And that's also something I just want to clarify. Right now, we do have loading and unloading zones, and but they're not specified time. So we'll be bringing that forward back to y'all. But how we handle it today is if it's a moving vehicle and they're moving in and out, as long as we're showing that work's being done, we allow it to happen. But we do not allow like a moving truck to just sit there with no activity happening whatsoever. That's not the point of a loading and unloading zone. A couple questions. Yes, is, there, is there an app that we can look at for this? Do we have a demo yet? So maybe next month. Just yeah, yes, ma'am. I will definitely have that. I will tell you, I ran through the app demo, um, and there was a lot of changes I requested in the app. So okay. they are working on getting that up to date, um, and I'd like to have that kind of ready and primed, and then I would love to walk you all through it. So I think, do you think we'll be ready in March? Oh. I think we can be ready in March. We'll actually take you all through a demo. How's that sound? Great. Yep. As long as it, you approve it, then yes. it's easier. Uh, yeah, I... I Made quite a few changes to the way it functioned. So the enforcement people, it's my understanding they're going to be working for uh, the this commission plus the other commission. Yes, okay. and be crossing over. Both of them are already crossing over. Do you know what kind? I'm curious. Are they going to be walking? Do they have vehicles? Are they riding bikes? I you, mean, all of that. So it's 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 um, one of the we we have purchased vehicles, but in the downtown core, it's really hard to move by a car. So the, we're having the conversation about segways or bicycles. Um, of course, in this weather, it's really kind of hard when it gets below a certain temperature. It's kind of hard to move um, on that. But I am looking at other vehicles. Maybe also um, we used to call it. Um, Go for is what they used to call it, and it's like a three wheeler, but it was completely um, enclosed, and that would allow them to move and then be in a comfortable um, temperature. And as well as also, if it rains, it protected them from the outside elements as well. So we're looking at some of those smaller units that we could consider that would allow them to actually move around in the down and in, in the area where it's the busiest. Is that is that like the things that? People will will let you pay them to like bike you across the bridge or someplace to the Titans that's called game. A, that's called a pet cab. <laughs> okay, all right, that's what that is. Yes, I mean, I, but you know, but it's it's somewhat similar. of the same concept, except for it's not a bicycle. It's actually more like an electric golf cart, I want to say, is how it functions. It has to be charged up on a regular basis. Um, I've used them in um, in South Florida because we have a very um, dense urban um, environment there, and it was very hard for the cars to get around, and this would allow them to actually, it's, it's like a, a big electric bike is I guess, the best way to explain it. And um, policy, the what the policy is going to be for enforcement. So when tickets are being written, once this all drops, can the commission be really educated because we'll get, we'll be contacted by yes, people? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I definitely will. And so just let us finish going through the actual setup and what that looks and feels like. Um, I feel like we're going to have some policy that we're going to have to ask y'all to make a decision on. That's going to allow us to um, consider a different business practice. I'm not ready for that today, but I, I feel like I'll be bringing that back to you most likely probably next month, if not definitely in April. Um, and the other thing is... March, excuse me. Okay. I'm in January. You're right. The other thing is uh, a lot of people who are uh, part of the building process, construction companies, et cetera, are they going to be informed if there's parking that they're used to going to their, or their staff's used to going to that's no longer free? Will they uh, be aware of that? So I will share with you one of the things that we are actually doing through the development process right now, when a developer comes through and they're looking for sign off from our department, we're requiring them to give us a parking plan. This is new. They were not required in the past. So when they're coming through and they're putting together their entire development, we're saying you no longer can use public parking spaces for your parking. You need to create a parking plan. And if that includes parking offsite and then, you know, transiting people over, you need to figure all that out and provide it with us before we're going to sign off on your plan to move into the development stage. That's a brand new process that we just started going through. So I think 
what we have out there now, we have not done that with the development community, but moving forward, we are. So I think we'll start seeing some changes where they're well aware that they're gonna have to figure out parking, that it's no longer gonna be dependent. That doesn't mean there won't be some employees that will just kind of take the easy up front, but that's why enforcement is so important. And if you are enforcing, we've been having that problem throughout the city today. I have a lot of uh, developers, um, construction teams that park illegally and we're out there writing tickets and they are now aware and they are actually moving their vehicle. And I've had a few developers come in and say, well, where are my employees supposed to park? And I'm like, you need to find a spot for them. That's really not my job. And I'm not, and I make suggestions. I always have a suggestion in my back pocket for them, but really we want them to hold and be responsible for that and how they're going to, where they're gonna put their employees while they're in construction at the different levels they go through construction. I will never know that, but they will based on how they're actually planning on developing their site. So the, the places around the universities mm -hmm. uh, that are being installed, they're gonna be two hour limits? Whatever is in place today, and I do not know, um, Commissioner, off the top of my head, okay. but whatever's in place today is going to stay the same. We're not looking to say, okay, well, this area is going to get this, but this is that. Okay. It's all going to be consistent. So if it's four hours, it'll stay four hours for everyone. And then once we get up and we really get organized, if we feel we need to, and we meet with the businesses in the area or the university and we talk through what that needs to be, they may decide two hours is enough. And then we'll come to you and say, we've met with them. We've had the community engagement. Here's where we're at. This is the direction we'd like to go for y'all to decide to allow us to change the time limit. Last question. And no problem. That's what I'm here for. Thank is, you for is, asking. <laughs> All of you. I don't know if you'll hear this one. Are we going to be doing, are we or our partners going to be putting boots on cars? Yes. We will be. Um, but we'll I don't be. think that's very popular. <laughs> no, it's not. But we have to do that in collaboration with the courts. Okay. I cannot just go out and boot. There's actually legislation that kind of regulates that. The court has to give me what we call a scoff-all list. And based on that list, if we do come across that car after it's met all the, if it's failed to do what it's supposed to in legisl in le and it meets all the legislation requirements and we get the ding, we would notify the court we got a ding and we would actually, we're not booting, we're not using a boot, we're using a product called Barnacle and it actually goes over your windshield wiper. It's much safer, it's safer for the enforcement individual um, and it really forces the person that owns the car to call in, have the conversation before we release it and pick it back up. So uh, we are gonna be using a product but not a boot. So we're moving into a product called the Barnacle. Uh, but that has to be again, we have to do that in partnership with the court system. Right now, um, I will, we are going back through the current scoff law and verifying the data um, because the courts have done a really great job, but they too, a few years back, moved into a new electronic system for handling court documents. And so we've, um, they actually have found a few hiccups in trying to work through the electronic of moving citation management over how that would look and feel. So we have a little bit of cleanup we need to do before we move into that, but we'll be doing that in collaboration with the court system. So a barnacle means you you get a notification and you have to contact that notification and someone comes to the car to remove the barnacle? Correct. Rather than being towed to a lot somewhere? Correct. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. And then, and then you, that's after you verify payment, which we'll be able to do on real time, and then it gets removed and they move, and they get to go in, and our, and our individuals, our, our park enforcement folks move on as well. But yes, I don't like to tow. That's my last, that's my last thing I like to do. I don't like to do that. Other commissioners, questions? Yes, council member. Thank you, Chair. Um, so when we were looking at the variety of sites and you indicated you definitely want to kind of keep things the way it is now, two versus uh, four, um, I noticed that, you know, some was at 225 and some was at 175. Yes, ma'am. And when I see stuff like that, I'm just like, why is it not all $2? Um, <laughs> And, you know, I mean, I certainly understand about, you know, surge pricing and demand that we are moving in that direction, but also from a simplicity standpoint, how do we make an argument at present that it costs 175 here and 225 there? And 
would it not be simpler <laughs> just to say, you know, it's all two dollars? I mean, do the math. So you don't lose revenue, but you know what I mean. Like, no, what? no, no. And I agree with you a hundred percent. I think also uh, it just makes a lot more sense to be. Um, incremental dollar amounts versus half a cent or a quarter or something. We just haven't done the full-blown analysis to have that conversation with y'all today, um, but we're working in that direction. So I will say in the future, we'll be back before you. If you remember when we when I first started discussing smart parking with the commission, I had said my first step would be to get the kiosks in, to look at um, adjusting the hour of enforcement, then look at adding inventory, and then my last step would be actually doing the rate changes accordingly. So we are working on that analysis. I just do not have it ready for conversation, but I will be bringing something back before this commission for consideration. Most, Because I do agree with you. And I want to also go incremental. So it'll be a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. The half cents or a quarter is, is really troublesome for, some, for, for most folks. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Not... Uh, is there a motion to approve item 5.01 to dot one to 5.01 dot 10? So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? It's your, your meters have been approved. Thank you so much. Thank I you. really do appreciate that. Okay. All right. The next item on the agenda is 5.02, which is authorize a new truck restriction for Robertson Avenue from Briley Parkway to Basswood Avenue is requested by Council Member Roberts. Staff, you have background on this, please. Uh, just real quickly, um, Council Member Roberts couldn't attend due to a doctor's appointment, so she wanted that to be known. Um, I ask Andy to come up and just give background on this location. There is in your packet an attachment of an agreement um, for you to refer to. That, that was signed and everyone agrees to this um, this access. The road, okay. The road access license agreement, is that the one in reference? Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Please I'm, proceed. I'm Andrew Smith, uh, traffic engineer with NDOT. Uh, the neighbors of Robertson Avenue have sought for quite some time a truck restriction. Uh, this is a uh, what functions really as kind of a collector road through a residential neighborhood, but there's uh, Riley Parkway at, at the eastern end, and at the western end is a quarry and a concrete plant and some other heavy industrial users and we have been unable to entertain a truck restriction because that would leave those heavy industrial users without access to get to Briley Parkway. Um, Rogers Group and their subsidiary, Aria Stone, have constructed a new access road, and you can see that in your packet, um, the, uh, the yellow arrow up to the north. They've, they're crossing a creek there, and that access road comes out to Cockrell Bend Boulevard. And, and, and still, when that was constructed, we were still unable to proceed with a truck restriction because that would, uh, that would mean we were telling other private properties that you have to cross somebody else's property in order to get out uh, in order to get out of your of your industrial parcel, uh, but the uh, the parties have all agreed to a memorandum of understanding and have signed uh, access easements for ingress and egress to permit those parties to use that Rogers Group access road and the bridge and then come out up to uh, Cockrell Bend Boulevard. And since they have executed that agreement, now's the time to request a truck restriction. If I could add one thing yes. to that, please, um, Mr. Chair. Um, we are also working on putting a diverge changer, uh, like a pork chop, that would kind of force the trucks also to make a right turn. So the request of um, putting up a restriction on um, Robertson Avenue is going to fall in with the initiatives that we're doing with some hardscape as well. So I just wanted to add that, that we've been working with the community as well as with all of the area 
um, trucking business um, to get that done. So uh, we were just waiting on the agreement, and now that we're there wrapping up, we'll actually move forward with the build out of that hearts, hearts game. Uh, quick question. I don't know if this legal counsel or not, but <clears throat> road access license agreement like this, where does it get filed so that everyone knows that it's, it exists? Good question. So the easement agreements would be recorded with the um, register of deeds. So everyone would know it it exists. That's. I mean, you would have to do title right. search on the right. property. It goes yeah. across, but. Okay. I think that's that's important for to make sure it gets properly recorded. Okay. Any questions, comments? Yes. Um, I would just like to make a comment and thank Council Lady Roberts because I know this is something her community has wanted for a long time. We're in our eighth year of service. I mean, this has been ongoing for a long time. So um, I appreciate her diligence and all the partners who work together um, to make this happen and as well the hardscape, you know, kind of uh, supporting or supplementing that um, no truck option. So I appreciate staff and Council Lady Roberts and all the parties just wanted to express that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Is there? Yes. Is just is this? Excuse me. Is this just for their company vehicles or private haulers as well? It'll be for all. It'll be well. Right now, they built a bridge, so most private haulers, everybody's using the bridge. So the agreement allows for everyone to use the new bridge, which takes them out on the back roads and connects them directly with the um, highway. And forgive me, I'm forgetting the street at the moment. Centennial. Concordia. Thank you. Um, and so we already pretty much have the traffic going that way. Um, this is just going to really make sure that one or two individuals that's not paying attention and wants to, we're going to force them all to go a different way so um, and make sure that they're using that new route that we invented but every one of the areas actually signed an agreement that they would all utilize that and this is just going to make sure that that's why we want to put up the no restriction and we'll add that hard um, scape as well and that way it'll force everyone to do it no matter what any other questions not is there a motion to approve I'd like to make a motion to approve is there a sec second second First and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, it's been approved. Thank you. All right, the next item is uh, uh, the traffic and parking website contact information change some updates. Uh, Mr. Odom. Yes, this was mentioned by Councilmember Henderson at the last meeting. Um, we did go back and look at the planning's website. Um, Two things on the website, there is a contact information for staff and we really, that was actually a recommendation by uh, Councilmember Henderson early in the year, last year, uh, to kind of remove TPCs because you guys were getting bombarded. So Andy is now up there, uh, but there is another selection on that website to look at and, and basically contact the commission members so when you go there, it has everybody's individual email. So what people have been doing is maybe they'll email one commissioner or something like that. So looking at the planning's website, this is not coming through on my screen, but it's up there. You can see the planning's website just has uh, the Com planning commission uh, email. And so that's what we're going to do is actually edit that form. Actually, I think we already have, but I'm, we are going to let you guys approve it. <laughs> but uh, we're going to put TM, TPC's web, uh, email address up there for every commissioner. So once somebody just hits that, they, they send it to all of you at the same time. So clean, and uh, we hope you guys approve. Does this require approval? Well, you can. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We, We've kind of already done it, but it's not posted to the website. But okay. If you okay. want to make it official and just bless it, that's fine. Okay. I mean, the commission takes no action except by motion. So if you want to take action, that's how to do it. Okay. I'm not sure it's necessary, but is everybody okay with this? Okay. There we go. Yep. All right. And chair. Yes. If I may, and I, I just want to appreciate staff um, for doing that because we have that, you know, Metro Council at um, 
planning commission, I would like to see a whole lot of our boards and commissions park forward right. and others do that. And then um, also too, it, it really, the burden on the citizen, they don't have to type in 11 separate independent email addresses and y'all don't necessarily have to have those online, but I would just ask if we make sure you know, that it's clear now it's Mr. Smith for kind of procedural staff type questions, but if the website will be clear that if um, folks want to contact the commission about an item that's on the agenda, that's really what we're looking for is giving people a unified way to say, I support these bike lanes or I support these parking meters um, and so that it comes in that one way. Yeah, so, actually, if you great. notice on the agenda, there is the TPC website. So we can actually do that here on the agenda. Um, when we try to make changes to the website, our, our webmaster on the NDOT side has been told, no, we want to keep this standardized so every commission looks the same. So they won't really let us make little comments next to Andy's little name and, and email. So they're kind of restricting us there. So we just try to circumvent that with little notes on the agenda. Um, okay, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate that feedback because that may be a conversation that I need to have with Mr. Durbin or, you know, I, I yeah. just, I think it's very unclear to a citizen who lands on the website, yeah. how they are supposed to how engage. Exactly. And and I, th that would help all boards and commissions. So and I, they can make that a change across the board. Yes, indeed. Well, Thank you. It would seem that this particular email nomenclature should be common for all commissions. So it, it wouldn't seem to be. Okay. One other thing. Yes. Just for clarity, like when we get, re when we people reach out to us from the media and or individuals, we need to direct that to you, Chairman Green, to... PR or what, what is that? Yeah. We, we got some, some yes, weak I think, last yeah, week. Yeah, I think prior to Christmas there were some um, inquiries made and I mean, getting several phone calls. And I think I directed all those to Ms. Stone, who is the NDOT person. So if you could, and if, if somehow or another, I think if Ms. Stone would communicate with the media about that she's the point of contact, and maybe that would save them from contacting us. And also, please, um, commissioners, please feel free. If you do get contacted by the media and you just aren't quite sure where to send it, please always feel free to send it to me, and I will make sure it gets to the right person. Okay. Um, so um, Courtney Stone is actually um, director over our PIO, um, and she handles all of that media contact. So if you send it to me, I'm going to send it and make sure that she gets back in touch, we'll loop you in on the end game, just so you know it was handled and resolved. But please feel free to use me as a do we as a pass through. Sorry, is, do we have like for media inquiries on the website, or is that something? It is on the website, but that doesn't mean they necessarily pay attention to it. So I would say, just if you do get it, just send it. If, if you if you're not comfortable sending it over to Courtney, please feel free to just to send it to me, and we will get it over to her and make sure that she's responding. Thank you. And no problem. I guess I would make the point then, though, if we have TPC at Nashville.gov staff that is auto CC'd on that, then that no longer becomes an issue. Right. Commissioner Mason, that they cherry picked one person out because you said this or that. Um, I mean, they certainly can email to the commission and say, at this meeting, Commissioner Mason said, could you put me in touch? I mean, I, I guess we can all, you know, it, it's not that we're trying to avoid questions nope. from the media. But um, it, it does put commissioners, I think, sometimes. I think we as council members, like, media contacts us all the time. Um, but I think it is, it can be um, confusing. As yes. As, yeah. And I think with going with the one email, we're, we're going to, because staff is getting this, you're going to all get it, we're going to get it, and then we're going to see it and we're going to respond as well. And we may respond back to each one of y'all individually that we took care of it through um, Ms. Courtney Stone, who handles our PIO, and just let y'all know the outcome of how we handled it. And PIO is Public Information, Information. Officer. Correct. Any our office. Any other comments? Okay. Does anybody have any other items? Okay. Okay. I'll make we, a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. 
If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.